Our next presenter is brought to us by Context. Uh, many of you, of course, know Context as our longstanding uh, research partner, always looking for fresh thinking around particularly one of the biggest questions in the industry. Uh, distributors, retailers, how can we best adapt to consumers who shop anywhere, anytime? Uh, Chris has really unique insight into this omni-channel opportunity. Uh, it's decades of experience. He is a psychologist, he is a trainer, he is a consultant. He's recognized by the Venn Annual Ranking as one of the top 50 influencers in the world. So here to share some of that insight and, and experience with us today. Welcome to the stage, if you would please, Chris Peterson. Chris. Thank you. It is truly an honor to be here. Um, it's a great organization. I've learned so much just in a couple of days. The journey to the stage is taking me literally 35 years. That's a long time. I looked up and my first history in IT world and consulting with retailers was in 1982. Uh, so that goes back a ways. The one advantage of being the old man of retail is you get to have lived through some incredible experiences. Uh, one of mine was launching the IBM personal computer the PS1. And we forget that IBM coined the term personal computer. And the challenge was, where do you sell these? And IBM wanted to take it to the largest retailer in the world at the time, which was Sears and Roebuck in the US. It had a thousand stores, more than Walmart. And the forecast was, perhaps on the upside, we can sell 12,000 PS1s. That was one computer per month per store a little bit early. For a $6,000 hunk of iron with the floppy disk, uh, it was premature, and it took a long time for actually PCs to become mainstream in retail. But in the 35-year history I've had in this business, the last three years have been more dramatic change than the previous three decades. The industry is really undergoing a revolution. And it's quite exciting for me to be able to work in a number of countries. One of the countries I work in is India. And what's interesting about India is they don't have the history of entrenched retail, and they don't have wires running everywhere. They're wireless. It's mobile. It's the perfect environment for omnichannel. And I want to share some thoughts with you about that. First, a little bit of relationship with context. When I came to Europe well, about five years ago, I quickly realized I needed an on-the-ground partner. Uh, because what you need to understand the business is not only uh, relationships, but some very key data. And actually, we need some new metrics. The old metric of market share is not enough. We really need to understand how much is being sold through pure e-tail, how much is being sold online, through retail. The dynamics are shifting very dramatically. And I met Adam probably three years ago, and he had a great saying, fresh thinking for a faster world. And truly, if I would describe retail today, it's faster than ever. And you haven't seen anything yet in terms of the amount of magnitude of change. So what I thought I would do is share some experiences unique and specific to Europe, but it's also very applicable to many of the other countries that I visit. They always say start your presentation with something dramatic. I'm here to report that this year traditional retail is dead. I don't know exactly when retail began as an official business, probably 5,000 years ago when the shopkeepers set up in the marketplace. Uh, there was a place to come for the consumer to purchase products. I can be very clear that this year is the year for sure that retail is dead. How do I know that? February 14th, Valentine's Day 2017, a landslide event. You perhaps missed it, don't know. The big news is Warren Buffett dumped $900 million worth of shares in Walmart, a company he'd held stock in for 10 years. And you say, who's Warren Buffett? Well, he lives in my hometown of Omaha, Nebraska, one of the famous investors in companies worldwide. To give you some perspective that he knows something, one share of Berkshire Hathaway stock sells for $252,000. 
That's how important his stock is. So when he makes a move in the stock market, it becomes very significant. And people were watching. He kept a little bit of Walmart. But what he did is he dumped that stock. And what he's doing is he's buying airlines and railroads. Distribution. He sees the future of connections and distribution. He wants to own the conduits of that. So I think it's pretty significant that even an investor like Warren dumped the stock. It's not too hard when you look at this graph to see why. You don't have to be Warren Buffett to see the trends. You notice the graph starts in 2015, January. This is share value. Two years, the red line at the bottom is pretty much a flat line. And the Amazon line just continues to astound everyone in the market. He didn't buy Amazon. He says it's overpriced. But it's pretty significant to see that he's seeing trends and seeing that traditional retail is struggling, and he doesn't know if Walmart can catch up. One of the interesting things when you start looking behind the scenes is some additional facts. Walmart has struggled to get people to a marketplace. They're late to online. They just announced uh, last year 19 million products in their marketplace. I saw the CEO just an update. They got to 38 million products in the marketplace. That's significant because you need at that level to track people. For perspective, Amazon has 365 million products in their marketplace. But more importantly, they have 2 million participants, sellers, in their marketplace. Make no mistake about it. In addition to being a retailer, Amazon will be one of the largest distributors in the world. They're in the distribution business. They're leasing planes. They're buying boats. They're going direct from China, where the technology is made, to the end consumer. So a very unique force driving the change. One of the ways to look at this is the legacy of the supply chain. If you look at the past, there were suppliers that built things, importers that brought them into the country, held the stock as a distributor, sold to the wholesalers who sold to the retailers. It made sense 20 years ago. That model is being challenged, not by competitors in the industry, but what's changing the industry is the consumer. The consumer is going direct. They now have access through mobile devices to purchase anytime and everywhere. So the term, and it's a very big one, is called disintermediation. In short sense, it means if you don't add value, you're gone. So the interesting question, particularly for distributors today, is what's your value? It may not be holding boxes and shipping boxes. It may be that it has to be much more in the value chain than just that. So what I want to talk about is I don't see that as a glass half empty. I see that as a world of opportunity for distributors. And by the way, if you're a vendor selling products, there's implications and opportunities for you. And certainly, there's opportunities for retailers. But it requires a bit of different thinking. And one of the best innovators in the industry has been Amazon. This is from the Amazon Europe website marketplace. And you see the red box up there. They're thinking about how do we make this simple? How do we make it streamlined? How do we take time and pain out of the process? If you become a marketplace member, you automatically get listed on all the websites. They manage your inventory. They manage your inventory. That sounds an awful lot like distribution. So let's back up a step. Let's see who the culprit really is. This young millennial with her phone, she's the one that's rocking the boat. She's the one that's making your life complex. And by the way, it's not just her. The fastest growing segment of online shoppers are people my age. You should have seen my house at Christmas time. There was a parade of Amazon trucks coming every day before the holiday from my wife, who now is the ultimate shopper and, and deliverer. The key to this is consumers have already voted. They're not going back. They're not voting online versus stores. That's not the vote. What they're saying is, 
I want to do it on my terms, where I'm at right now, and I'm in charge. So omnichannel is a response to the consumers wanting to be able to shop anytime, everywhere, but also they want delivery now on their terms. And that's the opportunity for distributors, is the ability to deliver the goods. In a very real sense, what has changed is the cash register is no longer POS. The consumer holding the device is the point of sale. They can transact business anywhere in the world from a mobile phone. And that changes everything about how we market the products and particularly how we deliver the products through distribution. So the consumer is really the POS now. Because in many ways, the, the journey has gotten very complex. Consumers don't shop linearly where they see an ad, they get motivated by a promotion, go to the store. They're going all over the place. They're going to Facebook, they're going to websites. Any one of those points, they may decide to make a purchase. 60-some percent of consumers who shop more than one channel have already completed an online purchase picked up in store via their mobile phone. Mobility is going to be the portal, the fountain. So the four Ps, product, price, promotion, and place, which was the store, have literally been replaced by consumer-oriented terms. Customize, choice, convenience, that's the new model that is really changing a lot of distribution. I was in the tube in London last week, and it was interesting to see these ads in the tube. The first one is the Valentine's Day ad, and if you look at the bottom, it says free courier service. You may have screwed up, guy, but we'll get it to the door if you buy now. But I really think the one on the right is the essence of where we're at today. If you order before midnight, you will have it tomorrow. That's distribution. Somebody has got to deliver that piece of goods. And you'll notice on the top, you can do it via Facebook, you can do it via Twitter. This is the new age we're living. So what is the state of Omni Channel in Europe? Adam and I wanted to know, and if you wanna know, go light some candles, go ask. So we did a omni-channel survey last December of some of the top tech retailers in Europe. Uh, we really focused on the managing directors in the C-suite. We wanted to know what the senior people were saying about omni-channel. Very quickly, 90% said it was very critical or important to their business. We're not sure what the other 10% was saying, not very important. But what they're saying is, this is our core strategy. We've got to adapt as retailers. The other interesting finding is it was a, a great confirmation that they're seeing the customer has changed. 96%, 97% said we're doing this because the customer's shopping has changed. How prepared are you? Take this one with a grain of salt. Is a CEO going to say, no, we're not prepared? <laughs> I think this is a little hedging of bets here. I look at the 20% said they're well prepared, which means 80% were still in transition. They're looking for partners. And when you ask them what is going to be required, distributors, this is your shopping list of where to add value. Systems, platform, integration, how to pull this together. Uh, distribution logistics, specifically, 55% of the top tech retailers said, we need your help. In fact, the estimate I've seen in Europe, there's only a couple of retailers have the bandwidth, resources, and capability of delivering omnichannel on their own. They need partners. So what are the distributor opportunities? I don't have a lot of time. I'll highlight a few of them. I think you have to think outside the box with me. You have to be a little bit creative. The role is going to change. If you want to be in the leadership position, we got to think in new ways, both for distributor standpoint, retail standpoint. So I want to cover these five very quickly. The last mile, and much of Europe's last kilometer, is the new mission critical part of logistics. It costs as much as 40 to 50% for that last bit to your door. It's expensive. 
In the old days of retail, you had customers coming and doing their own delivery. The last mile is the key, and increasingly, when you see the online component take off, a huge portion of that is still to the home door or to the business door. That's the other aspect. So I think you're going to see a growth tremendously in drop shipments. We'll talk about that in terms of long tail. The more SKUs you add to the system, many more of those are going to have to be held outside of the retailer, direct from the vendor in some cases, through the distributor. So a drop shipment strategy becomes mission critical. Long tail. Long tail is this huge portion out here where there isn't a lot of volume, but is very significant in terms of key SKUs. Gaming and VR, VR particularly right now, is a long tail SKU, a lot of potential. Retailers want to be there, but they can't afford to stock all that inventory from the long tail in their traditional inventory system. Hence, we need distributors. We need distributors as partners here. And I think a key part of it is going to also be R to B, retail to business. The research that I've seen, particularly in the US, but also now in Europe, a significant portion of small and medium businesses are buying through retail because they want the service contract. They want the know-how, the geek squads. So they're buying their first server there. You're not going to stock a server on the retail floor. I need a distributor. I need a partnership to accomplish long tail. Smart home is another category that's still growing. A lot of interest in it, but thousands of SKUs. In order to add assortment, we're going to need a distributor to help us work through that. Have you significantly increased the number of online SKUs? 80% said yes. And this is where they're struggling. When you add online SKUs, that adds inventory, that adds cost. One of the new metrics that Adam and I are working on is GIMRI, gross margin return on inventory investment. The more SKUs you add, you have to be very efficient at turnover, inventory turnover. So that's going to be a new metric. Long tail is a challenge. We ask them, how much have you increased their assortment? And typically what you find is Europe is lagging behind. Most of the retailers said 50 to 100 percent. In the U.S. and the other areas that are very highly omnichannel, India even, it's more like a thousand percent, ten times more SKUs online than what they physically carry in store. That's a huge opportunity for distributors in Europe. Curation means what am I going to put on the floor? It's very hard to fit a hundred notebooks on the floor. You have to have a pretty large store to be able to stock that. In the old days, it was the top ten sellers supported by the next tier, and then sort of 70 fill in the assortment. The interesting thing now is there's almost a strategy of 70% of the SKUs on the floor should support click and collect. I want the people to shop online, find it, and be able to buy it in store. Regardless of which way it goes, the retailers need information. And they need strategy for rapid replenishment because inventory is a huge pain point. Click and collect, the Omni hybrid, buy online, pick up in store, projected to grow 300%. It's the number one omni-channel strategy in Europe right now. Major inventory issues. You've got to be able to manage it, be able to see it, and it has to be reliable that if somebody says, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to pick it up in your store, it's got to be there. There's a distributor, distributor in India that has only two warehouses they become a whole software service of how to manage click and collect. It's a new model of distribution of value added analytics on top of distribution. The amount of increasing expectations of consumers is incredible. They want rich content. They want to be able to see things more than a product shot. They particularly want personalization, and more importantly, they want real-time information. When they click that order, they expect within 60 seconds, two minutes, to have confirmation back and a tracking capability. Retailers can't manage all of this. Their systems were never set up to manage it all online. All of these things become incredibly important to fulfill, and that's where I see an opportunity for distributors, and MIA particularly. There's a few pain points about Omnichannel. It's not easy business. It's costly. There's some elephants in the room that few are talking about. 
And one of the elements is in the click re uh, return. Returns are growing dramatically because consumers expect to buy online and they want to return it in the store so they don't have to ship it back themselves. So if you look at the bottom photo, that's kind of what Boxing Day looks like after Christmas when everybody has the returns coming in. All that shrink wrap sitting there, unsaleable. There's going to be a whole new business around reverse logistics. Authorization, quality control, getting the inventory taken care of so it doesn't take up open to buy. So many of these things are very emerging needs that you have a part to play in. Is omni-channel more profitable? This is a startling chart. Yes, there were some people said it was, but it's pretty mixed. I'm not sure retailers know. I think what they know is we need help because all of this direct shipping, the last mile, very costly. Some said it's 10% more profitable. The high number was 40%. The scary part is the number of people who don't know. So I think there's going to be a real value add in helping them sort through the logistics chain, where the money is, where the costs are. Are you achieving ROI investments? Again, split. This is a new adventure in, in Europe, a lot of unknowns. Everybody will tell you it's a bit more expensive. We don't know exactly how long it takes. The scary part is it takes from 12 to 24 months for a retailer to see a return. They don't have that much capital and they also don't have that much time. That's where distributors come in. They're looking for partnerships. A few sound bites. Always find it's good to leave some tweetable quotes at the end. So here's my five sort of takeaways. First, the consumer behavior is killing traditional retail. It won't just be stores. Stores are not going away, but it won't just be stores. They demand both. Omni-channel is the new normal. In fact, we would say it's omni-retail. Today, retail is anytime and everywhere. You have to engage the customer where they are and deliver the way they want it. Differentiate value or die. That's pretty harsh. But if you looked at the disintermediation slide, it becomes quickly apparent that Amazon, Alibaba, one from the west, one from the east, they're trying to change the value chain. Really, we have to rethink the business model. It creates new opportunities. Disintermediation sounds like an awful death, and it could be. But when you think about disintermediation, what we're really saying is retail is a real-time business. Think about click and collect. That customer places the order on the web, expects to go to the store within 60 minutes and pick it up. That's real-time information. That means I have to have accurate inventory on the shelf. And the experience has to be impeccable when they arrive. I always have a major aha experience when I go look in a store and I can tell very quickly whether they're omni-channel. If you can't find the click and collect area in the store, you have to search for it. They're not there. It needs to be front and center. No one's going to do click and collect and go stand in line for 10, 20 minutes waiting for a cashier. That's not today's consumer. So we've got opportunities to work with our retailers and vendors. What if a distributor opened up a kiosk in the store run by the distributor and actually brought in the long tail SKU so that it could be ordered in store? Or there was a virtual kiosk on the customer's phone. I don't think we've begun to tap the capabilities of how distributors can bring technology and platform to the retailers, and it's a win-win situation. Unfortunately, this is not my tagline, quote. It's a pretty famous one. I use it all the time because it's so right on target. Bezos got it right day one. And it's all about innovation. And the big opportunity I see for EMEA is innovation. We've got to challenge our thinking. If you're a distributor, I think you have to look at some new opportunities in terms of value-add services, analytics. I think we have some opportunities in terms of new metrics of the business. Tomorrow truly is day one. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to sort of post that up for a while. 
because the guys that want to disintermediate you uh, certainly know about the innovation component. There's lots of unanswered questions, and one of the reasons I'm so excited to be here in Europe is to work with partners on these questions. Uh, one of them is, what are the best practice benchmarks? What, what is the mix of online versus retail sales? One of the fascinating things about Europe right now is the number of SKUs carried online versus stores is way different than the omni-channel in the US and some other areas of the world. Don't know what the benchmark is for Europe yet. We don't have enough of the data. I think it's incredibly important for distributors to plug into this omni-channel data because one of their huge value adds is helping to expand that assortment in a way that's profitable. Flow, where do purchases flow? We've so long looked at online versus stores. In fact, you will see data from many organizations. This is online, this is stores. What's happening today with click and collect, who gets credit for the sale? Does online get credit or does the store get credit? I know of one very large retailer in Europe right now says, we're giving credit to online because we have to show our board online is growing. So it becomes very interesting in terms of what does that mean in terms of data. And the last point, there's a lot of opportunities out there in emerging categories. We always think R to C first. R to B is going to be huge with this omni-channel. More and more businesses are buying through retail, particularly small business, IoT, smart home, major opportunities. So my time is up. <clears throat> there's some contact information. You'll see me following that guy around. He's sitting up front, Mr. Adam Simon. He's a great partner and character. Uh, we have great fun, and we will talk to you anytime and everywhere about Omnichannel as we continue to build out the expertise in the market. Thank you very much for your time. Chris, thank you very much. Thank you.